A moving target looms behind the street where soldiers stood. Siren screams out desperately like only humans could. And standing on my balcony, I watch the battle run. Yes, the war is never over, but the day is never done. Oh, the devil and all his wisdom, the father and all his grace. The servant's sons are washed in blood, and the man has run his race. Six white horses like the wind are running, five are far behind. The captain lost his daughter, the sergeant lost his mind. The soldiers, they still scream for riches, even though they swore that the sons and daughters wouldn't live unless we won the war. The Father and all His grace The servant's sons are washed in blood And the man has run his race This year, this is last August, by Dan Burroughs as editor of the paper in which he comes out strongly for the American Nazi Party. Here is uh, Major Kale here listed as a hero of the white race, uh, third man of the American Nazi Party. And of course, all the way through here, he uh, advocates the American Nazi Party. This is the thing that I think that is going to be of interest. And also, this magazine here, of which he was the editor and publisher, I have reproduced at the top of this paper here his editorial on killing and murder. And this is, of course, uh, one of the things that we cross swords on here at the, at the party. Uh, why don't you go ahead and ask the questions, and then if they don't cover what I want to cover, why well, I'll go into it later. Do you want to say anything about the Virginia election first? Uh, the thing I have to say about the Virginia election... Well, wait a minute, let's roll. All right. The thing I have to say about the Virginia elections is that they have proved to me the tremendous power of the press, both positively and negatively. I have never experienced such a censorship and blackout of news in my life. Uh, 
And I feel that if the news had been covered uh, completely, I don't think there was much lying about us. There just was no mention of us. It was impossible to get any confrontation on the ideological issues of this election. Uh, I shall prepare myself for the next battle so that the press will not be able to black, be able to black me out. Burroughs killed himself, and there's a chance for a good smear here. I, I can well, see you have it any coming. Other candidates to get you more press attention. Well, I, if a Nazi has to kill himself and turn out to be a Jew in order to get publicity, things have got to be a pretty bad point here. What are your you're personal good? feelings about the uh, suicide of Dan Burroughs? Well, I think Mr. Burroughs uh, came to the inevitable conclusion of a life of lies. A man who starts out uh, to be in as uh, radical an organization as this and the Ku Klux Klan must be able to stay in the light of public attention. And he must be prepared that uh, when he is exposed as living a life, a completely opposite life of a lie, he's bound to have an explosion. That's what happened. I think that uh, had he come simply to me in the beginning and told me the situation, I'm sure it could have been worked out. I would have had nonetheless respect for him because he was born Jewish, providing he realized what most of the Jews are doing and deplored it. But his mistake, in my opinion, was trying to pretend that uh, he wasn't what he was. You would, you would still have been willing to have him in your organization had you known he was a Jew? Yes, sir, providing he was loyal to the American Republic, the Constitution, and the white race. And I think he was, by the way. I think he was 100% sincere about what he believed in. The place where I differed with Dan Burroughs was just that he, uh, I believe you've got to be 100% open and tell the truth. I hide nothing from the FBI or anybody else. And I've never had to take the Fifth Amendment and never would. But uh, Mr. Burroughs obviously was in an impossible posi position. If they called him before the House Committee, I don't know what he would have done. You, you differ from Hitler on that. Uh... Yes, sir, I do. I think that Hitler was in a position uh, much like the police in Los Angeles when the niggers rioted to the point where there was no more possibility of civil order and they had to maintain uh, military order. I think Hitler had to establish a form of political martial law because there were actually Bolshevik flags being raised in Germany. And uh, we haven't got to that point here, and I hope we never do. You said you're going to prepare yourself for your next political, but can't be blacked out. What I understand it's in excess of 7,000, and that's all I know. Do you know how much I got? No. <coughs> I was talking about 6,700. 67,000. 67, not 67,000, 6,700. 67,000. Godwin captured uh, the Negro vote, and he still ended up with less than a majority. Does this tell you anything? Yes, sir. It tells me the same thing that I see that happened in New York, that happens everywhere, uh, that the white people are still divided uh, into these meaningless teams of Democrats and Republicans, which don't mean anything. I think what the white people have got to do is do as the black people do. They vote black and we've got to vote white. And I think that before I get finished with my career, they will vote white. As, are, we, are we finished on the boroughs? Thing. Everybody was calling me yesterday and asking me a hundred questions of when I met him and so forth. I thought well, we... Were you, were you surprised? Uh, had you any inkling prior to the suicide that he, was, that he uh, was Jewish? I had no suspicion whatsoever. The only thing that was peculiar is the fact that he stole his first application when he quit here about two and a half, three years ago. He sneaked out of the upstairs window here and stole his application, which is a sworn and notarized statement uh, which requires uh, uh, complete information on parents and so forth, and he had perjured himself, so I can see why he stole the first one. But recently, his second application, when he reapplied, disappeared from our files, which are locked and inside of a locked room, and it's very hard for me to understand how that happened. This is the only inkling I had there was something wrong. When was he reinstated? Uh, Matt, you know that better than I Approximately uh, February 1960. What was that Excuse me, uh, February 1964. He was reinstated in February 1964, not as a stormtrooper, but as a uh, party member. What's the difference? The stormtrooper organization is under party discipline, and they are required to uh, to act upon command. A member has no uh, obligations to carry out any commands whatsoever other than to be loyal to the party. I think Burroughs had some uh, psychological problems. Oh, I think he was entirely... All you have to do is read his editorial here and uh, see the way he writes and how he thinks. Well, for instance, when he was here, his favorite occupation, whenever he could get away with it, was choking the party dog. We had a dog named Gas Chamber, and he used to choke the dog like mad and every, until I'd stop him. What was the dog's name? Gas Chamber. And he would really uh, take an um, uh, insane glee in choking the dog. And I couldn't understand that. 
And later on, when we got to the subject of what we were going to do with the communist Jews, uh, I was all for simply executing them like the Rosenbergs, and he would go into a rage. And he wanted to torture them, and he had all sorts of methods. He used to uh, collect books on torture. And uh, one of his greatest inventions that he considered his stroke of genius was his torture organ. Uh, what he developed was an electronic machine in which wires would be inserted in the, in the victim. And then he was going to have a piano keyboard connected with a, a volume control so that he could press the pedals and push all these different things and have the guy screaming in agony as the electricity hit him in different places. Well, I don't think a normal person thinks of this sort of thing. You considered him abnormal, did you? I did, but he was very brilliant, and he was able to perform his duties uh, brilliantly. I did not consider him dangerous, and as it turned out, he wasn't, <clears throat> except to himself. I think he was very dangerous to himself because and he was... Dog. Well, I, I protected the dog. I don't know if he's gotten any dogs, but I, he never actually hurt our dog. Why did you keep him around? Because he was extremely brilliant, and uh, he was very helpful in his duties. He did his duties excellently. He was a national secretary. He answered letters very responsibly and very intelligently. He was able to give good interviews. Uh, he just carried out his duties well. The fact that he was uh, slightly abnormal, uh, I hope, could be overcome in time. But as I see now what the problem was, there was no way to overcome it because it was a matter of birth, which he was ashamed to admit. How far away do you think you are from your <coughs> objective? Well, I think party. we're a whale of a lot closer than we were. Uh, I would ask anybody who, who inquires into our progress to ask themselves, would they have believed five years ago that I could get 7,000 people in Virginia to vote for a Nazi? And uh, I think that it's only a question of time if the Negroes keep raising the hell that they are before uh, 700,000 Virginians will want such a leader.
Tell us what happened. Well, I heard the two shots and uh, saw Rockwell slump down in the seat. And uh, we didn't know where they came from at first. Then we saw the two holes and it deduced that they came from the roof of these doors. Did his car stop or did it go yes, wild? Yes, it stopped and then it uh, drifted forward. have an incident three or four weeks ago. What happened? Uh, the subject was, uh, the Rockwell was near uh, his residence in that section of Wilson Boulevard, stopped at a mailbox which is on the highway, and his shot was fired from ambush, struck the car, did not strike him. Did he complain to you about that? Yeah, we did have a report on that incident. It was investigated. Any suspects? No, no suspects completed on that. This is one of those convenient neighborhood shopping centers. The grocery store is open to 11 p.m. There's a barber and a hairdresser and a cleaner, a hamburger stand, and an automatic laundry. As the crow flies, it's about 10 miles or so from Capitol Hill. George Lincoln Rockwell, leader of stormtroopers and believer in genocide, was doing his laundry this noon. He came out of this money-saving coin-operated laundry. He went over to his car in this parking space. He got in and he backed away. And as he did so from up there, suddenly two shots rang out. People in the stores heard them. Somebody in the laundromat heard footsteps on the roof. Some of those on the scene when it happened talked to ABC News correspondent Mal Good. If you could tell us what time this happened. Well, yeah. The first call I heard was around 12.10. And you do have a, a suspect. There is a man now who has been taken into custody who has gone to the Violations Bureau for a committing magistrate will advise him of his rights. The only indication that he was connected with the Rockwell movement? That you'll have to ask Inspector Cole. We won't be able to, to, to question him. I've had information here at the scene. He was formerly associated or presently associated or something with it. Don't know what he was associated, how he was associated, but that he was associated. Did he appear at all nervous when he was in here? No, he appeared very, um, 
like a businessman, I would have said that he was a businessman. How was he dressed? Well, I thought he had dark navy blue trousers on and a white shirt. That would have been my observation. I didn't closely observe the man, other than uh, his manners were very cordial, very uh, gentlemanly-like. You were in the shop when this did? You, know, you have no idea what they looked like? Well, I don't know if it was they or one or what. You've been, how long have you been barbering here, sir? Uh, in this location, about four years. Did you know Rockwell personally? Just, he came in from time to time for a haircut. Mm -hmm. and, uh, not very often, once every three or four months, something like that. What kind of man, how would you describe him, sir? Well, he was pretty quiet when, uh, when uh, he was in the barber shop. I don't know, he didn't, didn't have much to say. Most people seem to think he was a pretty gentle sort of man when he was out in public. And... Well, he, he didn't have much to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank sir. you for talking with us. Mm -hmm. Lost for the white community. Um, what kind of what kind of leadership can you define? What you think that Mr. Rockwell's contribution was uh, to the white community? Well, we believe that uh, Commander Rockwell will go down in history as, as one of the greatest living Americans, and also as one of the greatest living white uh, as one of the greatest white men. And uh, he was the first one in this country to really stand up on behalf of the white man, to make him uh, aware of his uh, need to fight for his rights, and uh, to stand up unafraid for what, what uh, one believes in, and to admit that he's a white man and to stand up for the interests of the white people. Sir, did he have any fear on, about his life? Uh, did he ever mention it? Uh, no, not really. He, uh, I always figured uh, that uh, there's no, you can't live uh, fearing death. In other, in, uh, in, in, uh, from another standpoint uh, you can't really live until you're ready to die and that was uh, embedded in his philosophy he had mentioned some time ago that he had a successor who was better qualified than him in the event something happened to him could you tell us who that person is or would you want uh, to at this time maybe you'd be embarrassed. i, I uh, don't know of any such person mm -hmm. are you going to try to continue and carry on uh, his mission uh, as you see it uh, well, we National Socialists will definitely continue the work that Commander Rockwell has started. Uh, it was one of his wishes, often expressed in his lifetime, that whatever happened to him, the idea which he spread, the movement which he created, should continue. And I'm sure every uh, one of his supporters and members around the country feel the same way, and they will go ahead and fight on so that his death will not have been without some meaning. Major, what, what has he been doing, I'll say, in the last two or three weeks or the last month? What kind of thing, activities has he been engaged in? Well, he's been planning some uh, major steps forward. For example, he was all set to come out with a book called White Power, which <laughs> was due for publication around the 1st of September. Has it written yet? Uh, yes, it, it has been. Just there were, a, in the remaining chapter or two, there was a little bit of uh, final work to be done, but he had worked out all of the details, and I'm sure it will be published. You have a publisher now? That's correct. So there's some question down in town that it might have been a dissident member of the party who committed this awful act. Would you agree with that, or do you have any idea? I, I, as I mentioned before, I find this a little bit inconceivable. I, I'd certainly hate to think that anybody who has ever associated with this organization would, would uh, ever even think of doing something like that. It, it just uh, it confounds me. He might have done it. Why? Well, as I indicated earlier, I can only go by who has benefited. I, I think that the uh, whoever did it, it is of benefit only to the blacks and to the Jews in this country. It was a defeat for every white man. You have uh, enough, can you sort of describe your house here and, or your headquarters? 
you have several people living here, do you, as well as offices or what? We have a headquarters staff that stays here. And how, many, how large is the staff now? Well, uh, we have had a few transfers. I, I don't have any figures immediately available. Four or five? It's a little more than that. You've had ter tremendous growth in recent years, uh, Major. Can you give us any ideas to how many chapters you have across the country at the present time as fostered by Mr. Rockwell? There are between uh, 14 and 18, roughly. What's been a major source of, of your support? Scattered white people all over Just, the country? Uh, or white working people, mainly. The bulk of our support comes from just ordinary people who have jobs and uh, support us because they believe in us. How large is your budget now about? I, I couldn't say. That's a little bit out of How many budget. party members do you have throughout the country? I don't have those figures immediately available. Major, could you tell us whether or not the recent riots the past two or three months, have they intensified your work and have, it, have the riots helped to increase your membership? Well, certainly when, when there's uh, all the chaos that's been created in our cities and that, there's, there's bound to be more response. Uh, Commander Rockwell for years, uh, five, six, seven years ago, has been predicting these very same things that have now occurred. And so when uh, these occurrences take place, Naturally, uh, some people finally uh, woke up. Has he gone to uh, any of the cities where these tragic events have happened and uh, tried to rally any white support? Well, he's, he's uh, been in most of the cities. Did he go to Detroit, for instance? That's At approximately 12 noon, this date, the police department dispatcher communications received a phone call, which was anonymous from a woman, stating that a man had been shot in a shopping center or given the location of 6,000 block of Wilson Boulevard in Arlington. On arrival there, the car was in the shopping center parking lot. The subject was laying by the vehicle. He had been shot in the head and the chest. The identification of the subject was George Lincoln Rockwell, Information at this point is that the shot was fired by someone from the roof of one of the buildings in the shopping center, which is one story shopping center, and fired down into the automobile or at him at the automobile. At this point, we have one suspect who was picked up in a general area of Washington Boulevard in Harrison, not too far distant from that location. He has not been charged as of now, and identification of the subject is not released at this point. Will he be charged? Uh, it will depend on the development of the case whether or not he will be charged. Sir, did you find a murder weapon? Uh, no weapon at this point has been. Are you uh, searching for one? We are. I understand the suspect, sir, is uh, associated or has been associated with Lincoln Rockwell. Would you uh, explain? I have this? no confirmation upon the background. There is a rumor that he is associated with it, but I have not had direct confirmation on this. About how far would you estimate he was the, the shot was fired? Uh, I don't have any estimation from the scene. I was not on the scene myself. Was this subject known? It was fairly close, department? yes. Is this subject known to the police department? The subject was picked up. Uh, I do not know. Is it true that the sniper was over a barber shop and that the barbers chased him? That I do not know. Does the suspect have a police record, sir, or have they ever been arrested by your department? We have not checked on records. Uh, we had not gotten booking information. At this point, he is merely a suspect, and at this point, is being questioned. Will there be a lineup involving any witnesses? That will depend on the development of the case. I understand that Rockwell was doing his laundry at this time, is that correct? Uh, again, I do not have the information. He was in the shopping center at that point. Nothing is the suspect a resident of Arlington? I have nothing on the identification of the suspect Sir, at all. Do you know if he was shot with a rifle or a pistol? The weapon I do not know. Does he have counsel? <coughs> Does he have a lawyer? Uh, at the point, he did not have one, and he had not been charged. Do you expect to pick up other suspects? Others will know that be picked up. Whether this one will be charged or released, I do not know at this point. Sir, were you worrying on those rights over the Violations Bureau? That is a use of procedure at the Violations Bureau, yes. Have you had much trouble dealing with the Nazi Party? Um, <laughs> as far as demonstrations are concerned and so forth, we have had little trouble here with them. Is he the only suspect you have? The only one held at this time, yes. Do you relate this to the incident?